Good morning, Westside Church. Uh, welcome to the online gathering. And we're so excited that you have decided to join us today. Shout out to all the church, home groups, all that stuff that is gathering in whatever spaces that you're gathering in in Central Oregon today. We're so blessed to be together. And I just want to present to you this idea before we begin to worship and, and sing. I want you to understand today that in a world where we can't be confident in hardly anything, that we're wondering about what tomorrow is going to look like, we can have confidence and understanding, not just that God exists, not just that he's out there in kind of this ethereal or purely theological sense, but we can have confidence that his presence is with us right here and now in whatever space you're making the decision to worship in today. So I promise you that while everything is unknown for the most part in so many of our lives, the known is that God loves us, he cares for us, and he doesn't just exist, but he's actively involved in our lives, amen? So Father God, we make the decision today as we worship, not just to sing the words and just recite the melodies, Lord Jesus, or walk through a religious exercise. Instead, we, Lord, Lord, we believe that we get to interact with the living God who is in our presence. And that confidence is just going to be throughout all of our lives as we gather, as we head into our week and as we begin to work and, and parent our children and, and figure out what life looks like for us, Jesus. We have confidence that you see us and you know us and you are here with us, Lord. We give you praise. We worship you in Jesus' name. Come on, and everybody said, amen. Let's worship together.
as we were singing that chorus. I, I've always thought it's funny how that chorus says, I will love you. I will. Because I'm like, well, I do. <laughs> Why am I singing I will? And I think today it's easy to not know what to do. It's easy to feel helpless and hopeless and to feel the need. I got to do something. I got to control something. At least me. I got to control something. <laughs> And I think this chorus is actually perfect for today, for right now, for this moment. I will love you, Lord, my strength. I don't know what to do. I, I, I don't know how to fix things, but I will love you, Lord, my shield. And I will love you, Lord, my rock. That's what I'm gonna do. When I can't figure out what else to put my hand to, to fix things, to control things, to make me feel better, I will love you, Lord. So I'd like for us to sing that again. And maybe, maybe we can just release our grip a little bit. I know I've got kind of a death grip on things right now. And let's just let it go. Let's lay it at the feet of Jesus. And all we need to do right now is love the Lord. Love him well. Love him with all that we are. That will do a lot more than we could ever do on our own, I think. So let's sing that together. I will love.
We thank you, God, that you are the reason we can sing that this morning. You are the reason, Lord, that it is well with our souls. No matter what is going on, the best day ever, the worst day ever, it is well with our souls because we have hope, because we have you, Jesus. And so this morning, we thank you, God, for who you are. You are unchanging, you are steadfast, and you are the rock we build our lives on. So we thank you, God. We worship you this morning. We give you all that we are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to continue our worship right now through our giving. And there's a a link you can click on on the webpage there in front of you um, if you'd like to do that now. And I'm going to pray for our gifts and then we'll continue on. Well, Jesus, you are worthy of all that we are and all that we have. And this morning we give to you, Jesus, maybe out of our lack, maybe out of our abundance, but we give to you because you're worthy, Jesus. We thank you, God, for all that you can do, Lord, with what we give. Maybe it's a little, maybe it's a ton, Lord Jesus, but you can do so much with it all. And we thank you for that. And so this morning we give to you cheerfully and joyfully and with faith that our gifts can accomplish lots in the kingdom because it's in your hands. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Every day in our community, we see needs all around us. Have you ever wondered how you can help but aren't sure of where to start? Join iHeart365 and receive a weekly text message with a tangible need from someone in need in our community. We text a need and you fill it. Love is action. Good morning, friends, people watching all over, and we want to say welcome to you, and we're so glad uh, you're here with us in a way here at Westside, and uh, thank you for tuning in, and thank you for being here in the crowd as well today. Um, We are taking a few weeks here in the month of November to look at what it means to really follow Jesus and to wear this label that we have as Christians. What are the fundamentals of our faith? Last week, Pastor Dave talked about love Um, that we are a people anchored and rooted in love. Today, we're gonna talk about what it means to have a vibrant faith. Um, The fact that you're listening to me right now probably means that you feel at some level like faith matters. Um, Not a lot of people tune in to watch online church at 8.30 or 10 o'clock in the morning on a Sunday because they don't think faith matters. So I'm glad that you're here uh, to talk about this with us today. Um, We're going to be in Hebrews chapter 11, a famous passage about the nature of faith. Um, Let's go there now. Hebrews 11 verse 1 says this, Now faith is confident in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. And verse 6, And it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. I hope that through this crazy, wild uh, roller coaster of a year, that we as a church might come out on the other side with a faith that is more vibrant, more alive, more deeply rooted in our hearts than ever before. Do you think that's possible? You know, in the hierarchy of what God wants from us, faith is at the top. Um, 
in the passage that uh, we looked at today, it goes on to talk about the faith of some of the heroes uh, in the Bible, it talks about Abraham. And it, the uh, scripture says in Romans chapter six, I believe that Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. That Abraham's faith was actually what counted for being right with God. So we see this, this order of things that God actually puts faith at the highest level of what he desires from his people, above good behavior, above morality. At the very top is faith. Our confidence in God and what he said and what he's going to do. Now, I know this, that when we hear the word faith, there's some positives and negatives attached to it. You know that? Maybe faith is a really positive for you. you when you hear the word faith, you think of, of people in your life who have been people of faith that, that just seem unflappable and like nothing gets to them. They just have this confidence and this, this easygoing nature because they're confident in their faith. You also might think of faith as, as some TV preacher asking for more money to fund some jet so that God will bankroll your dreams. Yeah, Pastor Ben. Pastor Ben's jet fund. We're going to take a collection at the end of the service. Westsidechurch.org slash jet fund. Just go there now. Faith can be seen as a good thing or a bad thing. You know, I think there was probably a day um, in, in our country where faith was generally thought of as a, as a, as a positive. And that's not necessarily the case anymore. That people of faith can be seen as, as pie in the sky thinkers people out of touch with reality. And yet here we are, intelligent people, logical people, still convinced that there's more than what we can see with our eyes. Still convinced that God is at work in a world that is broken, but he is not abandoned. That God is present this week in our city. God is at work this week in your home, in your relationships, and in the questions you have about what the future holds, God is present. And I was thinking about this. What, what do I want to gain from this year when it comes to my faith? A jet sounds nice. But more than that, here's what I want from my faith this year. With such uncertainty swirling around us, I want assurance. This morning, 2 o'clock in the morning, I looked at my... my uh, alarm clock in our room because my son was screaming. My two-year-old son was screaming, running down the hallway towards our room. Um, parents of young kids, you, you know the feeling. You're having a nice, peaceful sleep. Maybe you're, you're deep in a dream and awakened by a child. And he runs into our room. And, and this is pretty commonplace uh, these weeks right now. He's in a stage, uh, but he has these bad dreams. And when he does, he comes into our room and, and he's crying. And so I comfort him. And, and here's what I didn't say uh, when Jack came in this morning at two in the morning. I didn't grab him and say, hey, buddy, don't worry. Our long-term savings plan, it's on course still. <laughs> Pal, I know you're upset, but, but we're going to figure out a way to get you into college someday. I didn't, I didn't comfort him with a certainty about the long-term future. You see what I'm saying? What I did is I grab him and I hold him and I remind him of this, that whatever bad dream he just awoke from, there is something more real and he's going to feel it when he's with me. That there is um, a certainty not in the outcome of his future, that, that he will never get hurt and he'll never have his heart broken and nothing will ever go wrong and, and all these things. I don't know any about that. I don't know any of that, but I do know that when I'm with him, he can rest. He can be assured of our relationship that gives him the confidence he needs to know that the bad dream isn't all there is. And somebody needs to hear this this morning, that whatever bad dream you're living through, there is something more real, more certain, and more assuring. And it's not the promise of a perfect outcome. It is the presence of your father. And if he's with us, come on, if he's with us, we're going to be okay. Evan, what about, what about these lockdowns? They're coming again. What, what about the virus? What about, what about Sharknados? We don't know about those. I don't know about any of that. I especially don't know about Sharknados. 
But I know that if he's with us, we have this assurance and this confidence. We just can't be shaken. The outcome turns. Things don't go our way. The bottom falls out. We have this confidence because of the relationship we have with our Father. I think for many this year has revealed a need for faith. I mean, crisis has a way of doing that. But here we are, still standing. And I hope today that we will find more value in our faith than ever before. Um, If I can paraphrase that verse I just read out of Hebrews 11.1, that faith is assurance of what we do not see, I would say it this way, faith is assurance when it's too dark to see. Faith is this, this confidence and this knowledge that he is with us even when the darkness is all around us. So here's uh, the truth of today. The future is wildly uncertain. But we know that whatever today holds and tomorrow throws at us, the invisible God is here with us and he is for us and he is good. Um, one of the uh, first names that was given to Jesus was given prophetically in the book of Isaiah. The prophet Isaiah prophesies uh, what is, as Christians, we read as a messianic prophecy, a prophecy about the coming Messiah that would one day um, be given. And, And Isaiah says that his name would be Emmanuel, God with us. See, faith is this, this knowledge that what God has promised is that God is with us, not God owes us. You see the distinction there? See, faith isn't isn't saying, God, you owe me. Remember what you said. Pay up. It's saying, God, you said you would be with me. And even when I don't see it, I got Jesus. I have Emmanuel. I have God with us. I am not alone. Say that out loud, actually. I am not alone. God is with us. Chapter 11, verse 33, I want to read this. By faith, these people overthrew kingdoms. So uh, I, I'm going to encourage you to read actually the whole chapter this week. We're, we're going through this in our daily devotionals uh, on our website and via email. Um, please check those out. We're going to be walking through this whole chapter, looking at some of these, these faith heroes that the book of Hebrews chapter 11 talks about. Um, but then in verse 33, he, he's talking about all these, these people, Abraham and Joseph and Moses and Daniel and on and on the list goes. And he says, verse 33, by faith, these people overthrew kingdoms, ruled with justice and received what God had promised them. That sounds pretty great. Sign me up for that. They shut the mouth of lions, quenched the flames of fires, and escaped death by the edge of the sword. Their weakness turned to strength. They became strong in battle and put whole armies to flight. Women received their loved ones back from death. All right, let's stop there. That sounds really good. But it keeps going. But others were tortured. Sounds less good. Refusing to turn from God in order to be set free, they placed their hope in a better life after the resurrection. Some were jeered at and their backs were cut open with whips. Others were chained in prison. Some died by stoning. Some were sawed in half and some were killed with the sword. Some went about wearing sheeps of, uh, skins of sheep and goats, destitute and oppressed and mistreated. They were too good for this world, wandering over deserts and mountains, hiding in caves and holes in the ground. All these people earned a good rep- reputation because of their faith, yet none of them received all that God had promised. I like that first part, didn't you? Where they're all powerful and they got all the promises and it was all working out great against all odds. But that's not the whole picture of faith. Faith is both that confidence when God does come through and that confidence that isn't shaken even when he doesn't come through now. Um, you, you guys have done like Craigslist transactions, right? Right? It's 2020. You, you, of course, you've done tr- Craigslist transactions. So I was, uh, we were getting ready this, this past summer. We we're going on a camping trip. And so uh, I needed something and I found it on Craigslist. And it was like $16, not a big deal. And, uh, and so I, I text the guy and he, he texts back and he's like, hey, um, I asked for his address. Hey, I'm not gonna give you my address. Let's meet in the parking lot of uh, Planet Fitness. So he clearly trusts me. So we... We meet up in the, the uh, parking lot of Planet Fitness and, and uh, I get out and, 
and meet him and he shows me what I was buying. And, and so, um, and so I, I gave him like this, I gave him this little folded up uh, wad of cash. It was like 16 bucks, right? Not a big deal. And uh, I, I hand it to him and I say, uh, it's all there, don't worry. Ha ha. He just looks at me suspiciously and then he proceeds to unfold it and count out every dollar to get to 16 bucks. Like, really, man? He finishes counting, and I'm like, wow, this guy really doesn't trust me. And then he says this, he says, by the way, Pastor Evan, we really enjoy going to Westside Church. <laughs> okay, I'm so confused on so many levels, you know? Not a lot of trust there. You know, if, um, think of someone you trust, like really trust, more than you trust me, evidently. I was thinking about it, you know, if my dad owed me 16 bucks and he, he gave me this folded up handful of cash, you know what I'm not going to do? I'm not going to count it. Why? Because I have enough relationship with him to not need to do that. And if I saw him and he didn't have the cash, I wouldn't be like, hey, pay me what you owe me or this thing is over. Why? Because $16 isn't stronger than the relationship that I have with my father over the past 35 years. Sometimes our faith is shaken and we walk away from the presence of God, not because he did something that, 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 that was so offensive. It's because we have placed more value in the thing we need from him than we have in the relationship that has been or has not been built with him. And so God, where are you? You, you promised me, promise me my 16 bucks time to pay up and all of a sudden there's a delay. And we say, I guess this thing is not what it cracked up to be. He, he, didn't, he didn't come through for me. The relationship can't sustain uncertainty. And what the faith of these, these people in Hebrews, the first half of the, the people in Hebrews that got everything they were hoping for, and the second half, the people that didn't get what they were promised, but they still had their faith. What they had was a relationship that could sustain whether God came through in the ways they thought he would or not. That when God showed up, they didn't have to count it. That whatever God provided was going to be enough. And this is a word for somebody that whatever God provides in the days ahead, it may not look like what we, we think it should. It's enough. God's provision is enough in times of uncertainty. I don't need to count it. And so faith is confidence rooted in relationship. Confidence outside of relationship will be broken at the slightest hiccup. But when we lean into this relationship with God and we, we get in a place where we can hear from him and, and be with him, the relationship grows to the point where we have this great confidence in our faith. And it's hard right now. I mean, uh, my life is noisy. Anybody else's life noisy these days? Uh, many of us uh, are stuck in the house a lot of times with the kids. Uh, my wife, God bless her, um, is, is staying home and homeschooling our children. And a couple days a week, they, they do this pod with my nieces and nephews, my brother's kids. And so I'll come home and there'll be just a lot of children in the house. A lot of children. And um, I'm, I'm seeing, is that Mike and Allie are here today? They have that many children all the time. And so grace to you guys. But there's noise right now. And sometimes I'll, 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 you know, I'll be at work and a lot of meetings and things going on and then get home and there's all these kids and there's so much noise and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to take a break from the noise. I'm going to go read the news. That'll help, <laughs> right? And, and some, somehow we've gotten this idea that you know, the antidote to noise and stress in our lives is doubling down on noise and stress in our lives. That's going to take care of the problem. And somewhere in this noisy season of our lives, folks, we have to turn down the volume and fight for space in our hearts and our minds and our souls for the voice of God to speak to us. To get quiet, to find places where we turn off the devices and turn off the children, just kidding, we, we, they can stay, but, but find space 
Find space where you can hear the voice of God. Again, if it's been years since you've, you've opened your Bible and just, just read anything, maybe make some space this week. Just open the book of Psalms and just read a Psalm three or four times over and let it just sink in the voice of God over the noise of the world around us. Allow this relationship to be rebooted and restarted as we listen for the voice of God among the noise. Because noise feeds fear. Noise feeds fear. Um, I read this quote that said that uh, fear is faith in the wrong direction. I want to wrap up today by talking about this idea that faith displaces fear. Faith displaces fear. You know, in the Bible, um, whenever God shows up or an angel appears to people, uh, they usually lead with this statement, don't be afraid. And usually I would read that as a statement of comfort. Like, it's okay, man. Don't be afraid. But it can also be read as a rebuke. Don't be afraid. Stop choosing fear over faith. Stop Choosing to believe that God is not who he said he was. Don't be afraid. You see, sometimes fear sneaks up on us and it takes hold of us and, and fight as we might still fear creeps in. But other times, you know what happens? I choose fear. I choose it because it's familiar. I choose it because it's comfortable. I choose it because it's a nice alternative to the uncertainty of faith. And the reality is it's like a, it's like a road that, that forks off in two different directions. You've got to choose one. You've got to choose to be a person of fear or you've got to choose to be a person of faith. And there's plenty of fears to go around. Uh, fear is something that is almost in every area of our lives. And so we have to make this decision. Who gets to call the shots, our fear or our faith? Um, you might think when I say that, that, that I, am, I am promoting this idea that, that we are invincible. You know, hey, everybody take off your masks, give each other kisses and hugs in the room today. No, I'm not, I'm not saying that fear um, going away because faith displaces it. I'm not saying that we have to throw away caution or become a careless people. I'm saying we have to become a fearless people. I had this friend, a mentor of mine, I was living in Portland several years ago, and, uh, and this uh, elder in the church uh, would meet with me, and, and he would talk about, and a great man of faith, and I, I so looked up to him and, uh, and wanted to kind of emulate my faith after his. And one of the things that, that was kind of his almost extreme view of faith, he said, you know what, I, I get the, the bare minimum insurance. I don't do any collision insurance on my vehicles. I just have faith that God's going to take care of us. And I was like, that's awesome. And then his son uh, totaled their new forerunner. And then he came back to me and he's like, you know what, I, I am, I'm a person of faith in God and now in State Farm as well. Because see, reality kind of crept into his, his, his view and idea of faith. And, and listen to me, we can be cautious at times, caring for those around us and also fearless. They can, they can actually exist together. Do you know that? That we don't have to choose being careless or uh, being fearful. And those are the only options. We can be a fearless people who serve well, love well, are kind and considerate, who exercise wisdom but aren't motivated by fear. Fear does not call the shots even when we exercise wisdom. Come on, come on. I'm just trusting that at home churches, you guys are clapping and cheering wildly because in the room, it was just okay. <laughs> fear is a wonderful replacement, or I'm sorry, faith is a wonderful replacement for fear. Faith is a terrible substitute for wisdom. We need both, especially in the days ahead. So today, the world is shaking, but God is still sovereign. The future is uncertain, but we still trust that he's in control.
Lindsay and Deb led this morning the, the old hymn, It Is Well With My Soul. And I was thinking about the story of how that was written in the 18 somethings. Um, a Chicago lawyer named Horatio Spafford lost everything he had in um, the great fire in Chicago. Burned it all to the ground. No insurance, kind of like my friend Joe. No insurance, lost it all. Decided to restart his life in England. And so he sent his, his wife and his four daughters ahead of him on a ship. The ship sunk, his wife survived. He lost all four of his daughters, devastating. So here's Mr. Spafford. He's lost all his livelihood and all his earthly possessions. And now he's lost his children. He gets on a boat by himself to join his wife in England. And as he is on the ship where his daughters were lost, he penned those words. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. I hope our faith can be stirred up today. Faith, not in a positive outcome in every situation, not a, not a, a promise that, that all of our dreams are gonna be bankrolled by God, but this confidence that he is God with us. And that if he is with us, come what may, it's well with our soul. We are a people of faith, not driven by fear, not making our decisions and our, our, our plans for the future out of, out of what's gonna avoid the most trouble, but looking to God and with great faith saying, wherever you lead, I will follow. One of my favorite passages of, of scripture is Romans chapter eight. I've quoted it many times. It's taken on a new meaning for me in, the, in the, the last few months. Romans 8, 38, Paul wrote, I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. So Jesus, we put our trust and our faith in your love our confidence, our assurance is not based on what you're gonna do for us next, it's based on your presence that is with us today. No matter the outcome in every area of our lives, God, today we are choosing faith over fear. We are choosing to trust you. And we are asking God, would you give us a greater assurance today? All, 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 over this uh, auditorium, all over the uh, airways, the internet, as people are, are watching this today, I just pray for, for an injection, a, a sense of, of, of great faith and assurance just rising uh, in your people today, God. I just pray that, that we would um, have relationship that goes so deep in your presence, above the noise, that our confidence and our trust and our assurance would grow greater than it ever has been before. God, we pray for your grace. We pray for your strength. We pray for your presence in your church. Lord, we love you. We say all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, well, there's some, gonna be some questions for discussion. If you are in a home church today or, or just with your family or, or a friend, um, I encourage you to talk about this. What does it look like to be people of faith today? Hey, we love you so much. Uh, and we are so glad that we are in this together. Uh, God's got this. God bless you. We'll see you next week.